Uh, well, it's Wednesday and it's time for prayer at the well. I am believing the Lord that uh, many of us will gather in this virtual room today and that we are going to hear the voice of our Father. We're going to hear him speak to us. There's going to be an impartation and I believe there will be an activation of our faith because without faith, we cannot please God. And so last week in our broadcast, we talked about speaking to our hearts to believe again, speaking to our hearts to hope again, because for many, there's been season after season of adversity, of test, of trials, of wondering, God, where are you in the midst of this? God, speak, say something. And so today we want to deal with those faith challenging questions. Sometimes we dodge them. Sometimes we don't address them. And so oftentimes people's faith get derailed. But we want to be honest. We want to be truthful here. We want to be open because I believe God invites us to be honest. Come let us reason together, says the Lord. So please join me today and yes, invite someone to come along with you. God bless you, faithful sister Helen, always here whenever you can. God bless you. Yes, we want as many as can join us as you come on let me know where you're watching from yay hey marilyn from staten island over there in new york good to have you let us share the broadcast as we come on because the word we have today i believe it's a word that everybody needs if you haven't gone through your season of adversity keep living it's coming you know keep living it's coming if your faith hasn't gone through an earthquake and a hurricane and a tornado and a tsunami, keep living. It's coming. We don't get immunity. We don't get exemption. So I truly believe we're going to need to be able to answer these questions. Hey, Barkley, and make sure that we are solid and firm in our theology. Because last week when we talk about telling your heart to beat again, I realize the issue that we must address is our belief system. What do I believe about God? What do I believe about his nature, his character, his attributes? What do I understand and what, what teaching have I been subscribing to? You see, if I just only subscribe to name it, claim it, it's yours. I'm going to be in trouble when I've named it and, and I sought to claim it and then I don't receive it. If I just subscribe to a theology that says whatever I ask for, God will give it, then I am going to be shipwrecked in my faith when I have asked sincerely, prayed fervently, trusted unwaveringly, and yet I have not seen the manifestation. I believe there needs to be a correction in our theology if you and I are going to stand firm in the midst of adversity. What you believe about God, what you come to understand about God is going to be critical, right? In how you stand in the midst of your test. Hallelujah. So Father, we invite you today. Please sit with us. Please come in this moment and be with us. Give us the insight we need. Give us the revelation we are seeking, Lord. Give us the understanding. Lord, let our hearts be open. Let our spirits be open, Father, as you would release an impartation today. I believe many of our faith uh, is going to be reignited. Yes, I believe it. I believe hope is going to be stirred again. I believe faith is going to be activated. And I believe your heart, my heart will beat in a way that it probably hasn't done in a long time. Let faith arise, I declare, and let hope arise today. Come on, invite someone to watch with you. Invite someone to be with you and share, share, share the broadcast so others can be in this room. So last week we talked about telling your heart to beat again because of hope deferred, because of trauma, because of so many situations that came against your faith, your faith and your belief in God. And you have been like, oh my gosh, rocking as it were, wavering as it were. Today we want to, we want to broaden our 
our teaching and we want to talk about understanding God's silence and his sovereignty in your season of suffering. Every believer has seasons when he or she goes, go, goes, through, goes through adversity. The psalmist says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions. Let me find that verse. I have it somewhere in my notes. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, right? Um, but the Lord, but the Lord delivers him from them all. That is Psalm 34 and 19. I like how the, the today's living Bible re renders that same verse, Psalm 34 and 19, kindly put it. The good man <laughs> or the righteous man does not escape all troubles. He has them too. Do you get that? Part of our thinking is if I'm saved, I'm committed to the Lord, I'm serving the Lord, I've been faithful, then I have immunity. I have exemption. Not according to Psalm 34, 19. The good man does not escape tr all troubles. He has them too. But there is a but. And whenever you see but, <laughs> you need to go back because there's something being canceled out. There's something about to be reversed. But the Lord helps him in each and every one. So yes, you will have trouble in this world. Yes, you will have adversity in this world. Yes, you will have disappointment in this world. Yes, somebody that you love will leave you and die and the debt is going to seem senseless and, you know, unfair. And yet you need to know that even in those moments, God is saying, I am with you. So today we want to, we want to wrestle with <laughs> the understanding that God sometimes seems silent. And, and, and yet in those moments of silence, seemingly silence, <laughs> God is speaking on Monday and the one before we're talking about having ears to hear because we believe that God is a speaking God. But, but when God is a speaking God, yes, and, and yet we are not discerning what he's speaking, we are left in bewilderment, we are left in confusion. The key in, in, in your adverse, adver, adversity and in your, your test is to be able to, to say, God, teach me your ways. Show me what you're doing. Help me understand how I'm supposed to lean into this, how I'm supposed to trust in this moment. You may seem silent, but I know you're not. So I will keep my heart open. I will keep my ears open. I will keep my eyes open for what you will unveil and for what you will reveal. Because here's what um, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 29 and 29. Deuteronomy 29 and 29. And the, uh, the English Revised Version puts it this way. There are some things that the Lord our God has kept secret. Hi, Jenny. There are some things that the Lord our God has kept secret. Only he knows these things. But he told us about some things. Hi, Des. And these teachings are for us and our descendants forever. And we must obey all the, co that com that the commands in that law. That's Deuteronomy 29 and 29. Now, <laughs> when God chooses not to share some things, to reveal some things, it is because he's in charge. <laughs> We've got to accept and settle that he, he chooses and he has the prerogative, he has the right as the creator of, the, of our lives, of, the uni, of our universe, right, of the world, to not tell us what he's doing. <laughs> Some of you are parents and you know you have told your children many times because I said so. 
You don't have to understand why we have to move from this village or this island or this state to the other. You're not, you're not going to get it. Even if I try to make you understand, you won't get it. And you will just be even more confused why you have to leave your friends behind and you have to leave the school and, and the familiar house that you've grown to love and the neighborhood. You're not going to get it. We're moving. There are times when we're going to have to realize that the sovereign God, hi Pat, hi Barbara, welcome, please, as you come on, share this broadcast. It is one that all of us need to get today, this word, understanding God's silence and God's sovereignty in your season of suffering, I believe is key to stabilizing your faith. All right? So there are some things that are secret. There are some things that God does not reveal and God does not ex tell us. Our hearts are going to have to learn in this journey. Lord, you don't make sense right now, but I trust you. This doesn't make sense right now, but God, I choose to trust you. Listen, when he's silent, he's calling for us to trust and to know that the secret that he's withholding from us is never to harm us. Oh my God. The fact that you don't understand, I am not trying to hurt you. I am not trying to kill you. <laughs> I want you to trust me. I, Sister Roberts, I want you to lean into me. So God is sovereign. Let us talk about his sovereignty. That means he's ruler overall. He's in charge. He is in the driver's seat. He has the reins. He has the steering wheel. Now, there are some other things to be said about that, right? And we will come to those. But for now, God is sovereign. Psalm 115 verse 3. Psalm 115 3. Our God is in the heavens. He does all that he pleases. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I wish he would tell me what he's doing. Sometimes I wish he would sit me down and say, okay, Sandra, this is where we're going. Here's the, here's the, here's the map. We're going to stop at this junction. We're going to pull into this rest stop. <laughs> we're going to pull off the road. We're going to do, I mean, I wish I had all the details. Oops, he does not necessarily do that. I am just going to have to trust that if he pulls off, there's a reason. If he turns right, there's a reason. Ha. If he goes into the rest area and stays there an hour, a month, I am going to have to trust that he does what he pleases. Second Chronicles 29, 11 and 12. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory. Did you hear that? Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all the heavens and in the earth is yours. By the way, if you haven't watched the homegoing celebration for Dr. Lois Evans, Dr. Tony Evans' wife, you need to watch it. Her, her son, Jonathan Edwards, as sorry, Ed Evans, <laughs> as he gave the eulogy and Prior to that, they had played a song that his mom, in the midst of her in and out of consciousness, said to said openly, they're calling me for an award, but they're waiting for a song. And as the daughter Priscilla played the song another time, randomly decided to play a song from her playlist, her mother said, that's the song, and the song that she said, that's the song too, is victory belongs to Jesus. Ooh. And so one of the things he said as he eulogized his mom is that God told him, I get to define how my victory looks. I determine what is victory. So yes, your mother's death is still victory to me. Yes, that delay in your life is still victory to me. That disappointment that you can't make sense of is still my victory because I am the one who decides how victory looks. Oh, good God Almighty, help us, Lord. So greatness and glory and power and majesty 
and victory, they all belong to him. That's 2 Chronicles 29, 11 and 12. Proverbs 16 and 19. The heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. I could decide I'm going to do this. Listen, when I came to America, I had no intentions of becoming a pastor. First of all, I went to Bible college convinced that my only assignment was to minister to children. I didn't want to be a pastor. <laughs> I said it. I spoke it. I, I didn't believe that I was called to be a pastor. It's been 25 years. <laughs> Don't tell God what you won't do. <laughs> Don't tell God as if your life belongs to you. Remember, he's the author and the finisher of your faith, of your life. He's the creator, right? He writes the story and he decides what it should look like. I just need to submit to his writing and the unveiling of the script. Lord, help me, Jesus. Job 42 and 2. I know that you can do all things and no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Do you understand that God is working out his purposes in your life and in mine? Who God moves in a mysterious way, his wonders to perform. My mother's mother liked, she liked to quote that. He plants his footsteps on the seas and he rides upon the storm. Uh, part, another part of one of the verses says, don't question God. In your blind unbelief, man. Because behind every darkened cloud, wow, there's going to be a burst of rain. And if you don't understand what God is doing, you curse God in your night season. You curse God in your adversity. You walk away from God in the midst of the unanswered questions. But God is working things out for his purposes. Who? Isaiah 46, 9 to 10. Oh, I'll just read a portion of that. He says, my counsel shall stand and I will accomplish all my purpose. God is sovereign. God is sovereign. And he's not making up the story as we go. <laughs> Do you get that? He's not making up the story. You know, sometimes you're not really sure what you're doing. And so you're kind of making up a story as you go along. Not God. He has already established the ending from the beginning. So before you were even conceived, before your mama and dada got together, before our parents even had an idea that we were being formed in our mother's womb, God had established what every single moment of every single day of your life, my life would look like. Psalm 139 and 16. That verse has been a comfort and a consolation to me many times over in my journey. That God has chronicled, he has written every single day of my life before one of them came into being. In other words, before this day, 15th of January, 2020, God knew where I would be, what I would be doing. He knew where you would be and what you'd be doing. So when we don't understand what God is doing, we need to go back to the fact that he's sovereign, that he's already written the story and it's unfolding, not in the manner we would like, but it's unfolding according to his plans and according to his purposes. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Romans 8, 28. We know it. We rehearse it. But when the rubber hits the road, man, we struggle, we wrestle. Because sometimes I say, God, I cannot see how this will work for any good here. Lord, I don't understand. So many people dying in that earthquake. So many people dying in that tragedy. So many people being killed as they went into a synagogue or a mosque or a church. It doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. I can't see it. Psalm Romans 8, 28, the Amplified. We are sure, we are assured that, that God being a partner in their labor 
all things work together and are fitting into a plan. The plan that is sometimes secret, the plan that is sometimes um, yet to be unveiled, it's fitting into a plan for good to, to, to and to those who love God and are called according to his design and his purpose. I have to trust that when it doesn't make sense to Sandra, that the sovereign God is at work behind the scenes. Think of a tapestry. Think of a think of a think of a, 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 a um, an embroidery work where you are looking from below, and you are seeing all kinds of colors of threads, and they look like confu It looks like confusion. Because you are seen from the underside. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and you, you're looking at this thing and you're thinking, what, what, what is this about? I think of when I drive sometimes, they're always doing road construction here in central Florida. And oftentimes I am driving on the road and all I can see is congestion and a whole lot of mess, right? And it doesn't make sense to my eyes. To my understanding what the road engineers are up to but give them some months sometimes a longer sometimes longer years but give them some time to keep working to keep working on the details and one day you're driving on the same road and you're thinking wait a minute is this the same road there's an overpass there's a there's a turn here i mean all of a sudden the very road looks like it's always been there, but it is somebody, a genius, a thinker, a, 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 a professional person, proficient at what they're doing behind the scenes, determining what goes where, how, when, and I'm telling you when it's all done, it's like, oh, that's how God is at work in our lives. When we are seen from the underside, it looks messy. It doesn't make sense because we have limited view. Now we see through a glass dimly, darkly. Our vision is obscure. It is limited. I am telling you the truth. And we've got to trust the one who is seeing, sovereign. He's seeing all things. He is seeing from a, a place that you and I are not there. So he's seeing what you can see. If he, if he caused the delay, it's for a reason. If your heart feels disappointed, there is a purpose. If the death happened, he has a plan. Oh my God, if the divorce has wrecked you, you got to look for God at work. If the miscarriage has left you grieving, if the, if the, if the inf infertility has left your heart broken, if the singleness have you questioning, I am saying look for God because he's right there because he's suffering. Are you hearing me? He's suffering. He's suffering. And, and when we understand that we also live in a world that's evil, it's not that God is in the driver's seat and, and you know what? Everything that's happening, put it on God. Just blame God. God, where are you and why you didn't? Listen, we live in a fallen world. We live in a depraved world. We live in a sin-ridden world. Do you understand that? How I tend to describe this to people just think of walking into a room that is infected. It has the Ebola virus. Just think of walking into a room that is, that is contaminated with the worst kind of, you know, bacteria or virus. When you walk out of that room, chances are you are now contaminated. Chances are something is going to affect you in some way. There are people who have cancer today because of living in a certain community, because of working in a certain environment. There are people who have all kinds of allergies today because of being exposed to certain things. So we are in a sin sick world, a depraved world. And just because you live for God, 
Just because you read your Bible prayer every day, just because you're a pastor, an apostle, a bishop, just because you're a titer, just because you're a missionary, just because you do the best you can with what you have, does not give you immunity. Does not make you exempt. The righteous suffer. Psalm 34, 19. The righteous, the upright in heart. And you know, we've got to deal with the comforters like Job's. Well, if you were doing right, and if you were walking right, no curse is a lit without a cause. So if there's a curse on your life, there's got to be a cause. And if there's, listen, one day this blind boy got healed and they wanted Jesus to answer the question, who sinned? His mother, his father, somebody had to have sinned if this young man would born, be born blind. And Jesus said, hey, <laughs> neither this man nor his parents, good God Almighty, but that the works of God might be made manifested in him. Good God Almighty, Lord, I don't understand what you're doing. I thought I was walking the best way I knew how. How come this happens? How come my child that I raised to abstain from premarital sex gonna come tell me she's pregnant? How come my son that I raised to walk in integrity gonna be out there strung out on drugs? God help me, Jesus. Come on, somebody. We're going to have to get real in the house of God because too many people's faith are being shipwrecked and hijacked because we are dodging the real issues. We're not answering the questions. We're not dealing with people's anger and disappointment and derailment and disillusionment. And they're sitting up in our churches and they're singing the songs, but their hearts are cold. Their hearts are callous because they feel like God has let me down. Listen, God is inviting us, bring your broken heart, bring your disappointment, bring your anger, bring it, bring it, bring it. Psalm 34 and 18, you know, we know it as, you know, God is near to those who are broken in heart. Listen, the voice says when someone is hurting and broken in heart, when someone is hurting or broken hearted, the eternal moves in close and revives him in his pain. You and I are going to have to learn to bring our hearts. I, I did it last week. Lift your heart up to God and say, Lord, this is it. I have to tell you, God, I'm in a place right now of honestly not knowing what I believe. I am telling you right now, I am confused. God I feel that you're far away and the heavens are like brass. God, I don't understand what's going on. I raise my children to fear you. I raise my family to fear you. God, I, I, I was doing right in this marriage. I don't understand how we could be falling apart. God, help me understand that in this world, people are left to choose. <laughs> so God is sovereign true. But we also live in an evil world and man has a choice. We cannot push that aside when we grapple in our faith that sometimes one man's choice has ripple effect. It is true positively, but it's also true negatively. So the man who chooses to drink and then gets behind the wheel drunk and drives and runs through the red light and crashes his car into that unsuspecting young man and kills him in an instant. Where was God? Evil world, man's choice. One man's decision to drink, to go behind the wheel, to run the red light, cause an entire family to now be in grief. The human will, God will never override. That's why we're in sin, right? Because Adam and Eve were given a choice. Deuteronomy 30 and 19. 
I invoke as a witness against you today, Moses speaking to Israel, the heaven and the earth, life and death I have set before you, blessing and curse. So choose life that you may live, you and your offspring. Listen, there are consequences to the choices we make. And sometimes we want to put it all on God. No, we will have to reap the harvest of choices we make. I cannot smoke for 40 years and then say, where was God when now I'm dying of cancer? No, there are consequences. There are consequences. And by the way, even when he forgives us, even when we are forgiven, there are times when we have to work out that stuff, man. There are times when even somebody has gotten saved and they turn their life around that their years of abusing their body, they have to now deal with the consequences. Who Jesus, can we admit that if I eat incorrectly, that if I don't exercise, that if I don't rest, right? That if I don't ensure that I am forgiving and releasing people, yes, the ones who offend me. If I'm not, if I'm not making sure that I am managing my thought life, that I could have an unhealthy body, not because God is not wanting to heal, but the moment I start getting rid of the toxic stuff, the negative things, the moment I start doing the right things, the moment I start pressing and going to the gym and, and exercising and, and resting and, and, and settling issues and forgiving people and, and, and making sure that I'm working through some things. I believe your answer and my answer sometimes, oftentimes are in our own hands, not God's. Are you hearing me? So yes, God is suffering and he does what he pleases. But we also live also in a sick, sin sick world, a depraved world. And when you're in this world, you're not immune from suffering. You're not immune from disappointment. You're not immune. But also man has a will and we get to choose how we go live in this earth. All right. The other thing that we not need to wrestle with is that if God is at work behind the scenes, and he is, if he has secrets that he has not revealed to me, and he does, if, if, if all things have been worked together for my good, and it's going to fit into a big plan that God is at work, um, at, at work at orchestrating, then I will have to choose to trust in God. I will have to choose that I'm going to trust you, God, when you don't make sense. I'm going to trust you, God. I'm going to hold on to my faith. I'm going to hold on to my integrity. That's what Job said, that even though he slays me, I'm going to still trust him. That's what the Hebrew boy said. Listen, we know that God can deliver us from the fire. We are assured of that because he's good. He's mighty. He's great. He's awesome. He's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. Sometimes we're going to have to say, God, I believe you can heal. But if you choose not to, I will still praise you because you're still a healer. God, if you choose not to deliver, I know you're a deliverer and I am going to still proclaim it. Listen, it takes trust to proclaim God as the healer when you're, you're dying. Oh, God have mercy. Because you know that your circumstances does not, do not alter the God you're, you're talking about. Nothing in your life and nothing in my life, right? Nothing alters God's nature, God's attribute and God's character. He's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, because he's unchangeable, because he's still the same, I'm choosing to trust. Peter, I need to wrap this up. <laughs> Peter, when Jesus asked his disciples one day, when people were just leaving him, he looked to the, to the disciples and he says, will you also go? Do you also want to leave me? Peter's answer, put this please, John 6, 68. John 6, 68, Peter replied, Master, to whom will we go? You have the words of life, eternal life. We've already committed ourselves confident that you are the Holy One of God. 
I have settled in my heart 41 going on 42 years ago. My final answer is for God I live and for God I die. Okay, I've settled that. So when the crazy things happen, when the unanswered issues are surrounding me and circling me, when, when adversity hits me and I'm thinking, God, how come this happening? I have to say, I have decided. You might as well sing it with me, man. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Come on, somebody touch the heart, touch the thumbs today. Make that decision. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Listen, I have resolved in my heart. There is no other place to go. If you have found another place where there's comfort, where there's peace, and where there's grace and strength in the midst of adversity, okay. But I haven't. And after 42 years almost of walking with the Lord, I can tell you many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord brings them out. I often say I don't see the light at the end of this tunnel, but I can tell you in any inevitably, one day the sun is out again. Oh my God, I'm telling you, every storm has an end. Every adversity has an end. Every night comes to an end. Every winter comes to an end. I am telling you, it will end. It will end. It will end. So, make up in your mind. I have chosen. I have committed. I am persuaded. There is no other place to go. Who am I? Whom have I? Whom have I on earth besides you and who in heaven but you have you decided beloved have you decided that the god you serve is worthy of your trust have you decided that the god you've put your trust in is unchangeable and you can rely on him have you decided that yes there are times when you don't understand but here's the deal when god does not explain himself Look for the revelation of who he is. Because somewhere in your adversity, God wants to show up as the comforter. God wants to show up as shalom. God wants to show up, come on, as your refuge, as your anchor. God wants to show up. I have had in recent times, just in recent times, I have heard people say, man, as I was in my confusion, as I was perplexed in my mind and heart, I wrestled in prayer and I said God help me one friend said I said God help me quick she said God help me quick because if you don't help me quick I feel like I'm about to lose it God if you don't tell me something quickly right now I don't know if I can trust you I don't know if I can keep going I don't know I need answers and God may not give you explanation as to why the thing happened but he will show up beloved and he will give you a revelation of himself that would, make, that would make you say, I have an anchor that keeps my soul steadfast and sure. While the billows roll, oh God, fasten to the rock that cannot move, grounded, firm, and deep in my Savior's love. Listen, look for ways that God will show you portions and dimensions of himself. Look for his attributes in the midst of your adversity and make a decision that I have no other place to go. My mind's made up and I won't turn back. You gotta have a make up mind, a made up mind that God is trustworthy. God is trustworthy and I will fall back on him I will lean back and know he will catch me. Final scripture from a psalm that when I, when I read this psalm years and years ago, oh, you got to read Psalm 73, the whole chapter. Psalm 73, the psalmist says, oh, so you've been good to Israel, but to me, nah. I see your blessing, my neighbor. I see your blessing, that other person. But me, all I see is trouble. 
All I see is adversity. You ever felt like that? <laughs> One diagnosis after another, you, you come out of this fire, then you're in another fire. You come out of this adversity, then you're in another adversity. And it seems relentless. And you're thinking, wait a minute. There are people who are not even doing right. There are people who are not even serving God. And their family seems to be doing well. That's what the psalmist, he was wrestling. He was like, I nearly backslide. <laughs> he said, my feet almost slipped. I almost lost it. He said, until I went into the sanctuary. That's the revelation we're talking about. Until I went into the presence of God. Until I went into prayer. Until I fell on my face, snobbing. And crying and say, God, until I became broken, until I wept in his presence, then he came and he said, don't mind them. eh? They're on slippery ground. Don't mind them. Their, their, their blessing, their prosperity is temporary. Do you understand victory belongs to me? Do you understand greatness is in my hand? Do you understand kindness and goodness is the embodiment of who I am? And that I will make sure that all of this fits into a plan? Whew. So verse 26, as we close of this Psalm, Psalm 73, verse 26. We don't have to own our feelings. We don't have to identify them. We don't have to tell truth. We don't have to say, God, I vex. God, I can't sing right now. Oh my God. <laughs> Sometimes you're going to say, Lord, I'm so heavy. I, I want to sing about the goodness of God. I want to raise a hallelujah in the presence of the enemy. God, help me, help me, help me, help me find the song. Help me find the tune. Help me find the melody. Sometimes we've got to say, Lord, help me. I admit how broken I am in body and spirit. But God is my strength. I admit I have felt the disappointment and the disillusionment. I have felt the despair and I felt abandoned. But Isaiah 49 and 15. Can a woman forget the child that she has given suck to? Oh yeah, it is possible. There are mothers who have abandoned their children and God says, yea, she may. But I, your God, will never forsake you. I have etched you. I have tattooed you on the palm of my hand. You, beloved, have, you have been tattooed on the palm of God's hands. You are the apple of his eye. Never you forget that when you think you're walking alone, he's carrying you. Never you forget that just because you don't understand doesn't mean he doesn't have a plan. He's working it out. And so our responsibility is to anchor ourselves in him, in him, in him, is to, this, is to make a resolve. Yes, this is the resolution we need to make, that I am resolving and I am declaring that I have no other place to go. My mind's made up. And I will trust in my God. Beloved, <laughs> I trust this is helpful to you. I trust you are being encouraged that because you have placed your trust in God, you belong to him. And he says, those who trust in me will never be disappointed. In other words, ultimately, in the final analysis, remember, we're not just working things out. I mean, here, <laughs> God is not just working things out here. He's working things out for all of eternity. So sometimes we struggle because we are seeing just the here and the now. But God is seeing the here and the now, and he's seeing all of eternity. So Father, we thank you. We bless you. Somebody, come on, touch the heart, touch the thumbs. That's how you're blessing God. Touch the heart, touch the thumbs. That's how you're thanking him. That's how you're yet praising him. That's how you're yet blessing him in the midst of whatever you're facing. 
we choose to worship. We choose to raise a hallelujah. We choose to raise a hallelujah. We choose to say, God, you're still a God who heal. The last person I prayed for didn't get healed, but I will still pray for the next person. <laughs> the last thing I asked did, but I'll keep on praying. <laughs> My heart is broken, but I'll keep on worshiping. Father, we are declaring right now that our hearts are turned to you. Our eyes are lifted to you because it's from you our help comes. We choose to trust you. We choose to trust that you are sovereign. We choose to trust that you are in control. We choose to trust that you have the ending, but you 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 have you have the beginning, but you also have the ending. We choose to trust that our steps are ordered. We choose to trust that all things are being worked together for good. We choose to trust that in your hands are greatness and victory belongs to you. So today we pray for the one who is wrestling and struggling in their faith walk. We pray for the one who's saying, God, I can't sing right now. God, I can't pray right now. God, I don't have words right now. I We lift them up in prayer and we say, just release your groan. And if your, th your tears are your prayers, let them roll down your cheeks right now. If your groaning is all you can offer, offer the groan right now, Lord Jesus. Because whatever you can bring, Whatever the offering, whatever the brokenness, whatever the disappointment, you can bring it to the Lord and know that he can receive all that you bring and cause healing grace, strength to come to you. I release strength over your mind, strength over your heart. I declare hope being reignited now. I declare faith being activated in you right now. I declare the song of the Lord, the joy of the Lord stirring within your spirit now. I declare you who are depressed, you who are dejected, I declare your faith arising right now. I declare the song of the Lord over you. I declare Zephaniah 3 and 17. That the Lord your God is mighty and he's in the midst of you and he's mighty to save and he's singing songs of deliverance over you. I declare the, that, that, that the darkness is being broken now and light penetrates. Light come forth in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Do me a favor. Share this. Share this. Like it. And by the way, if you... If you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube ch channel, do that because these, these videos are being uploaded so you can go back to them, share them, share them, share them on your social media, share them on WhatsApp, share them in an email, share them on, in a, share them, share them because somebody needs to be encouraged. Share the word. Somebody is struggling today. Somebody wants to believe that this is going to be a great year. Somebody wants to believe that 2020, they're going to have a double-double. Somebody wants to believe. But season after season after season of hope deferred, they're struggling. Help them. Help them understand that God is still doing what he's always done and that he's never failed them and he never will. God bless you and I'll see you next time.